The pterygopalatine fossa is in here. To get a clear look at it, we need to remove the zygomatic arch. This is the pterygopalatine fossa. It lies between the pterygoid process and the hollow part of the maxilla. It's closed off medially by the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. Above, it opens into the inferior orbital fissure. The terminal branches of the maxillary artery and all the branches of the maxillary nerve pass through the pterygopalatine fossa, and the pterygopalatine ganglion lies in its depths. The lateral entrance to the pterygopalatine fossa is called the pterygomaxillary fissure. Entering the pterygopalatine fossa and looking straight ahead, that's directly medial, we can see a large bony opening. That's the sphenopalatine foramen. It opens into the nasal cavity. The nasopalatine nerves and the sphenopalatine artery pass through it. Looking down and a little backwards, we find this bony opening, the outlet of the pterygoid canal. The nerve of the pterygoid canal emerges here with its mix of autonomic and special sensory fibers. Moving laterally and looking a bit higher, we come to this round opening, the foramen rotundum. The maxillary nerve, V2, emerges through it, immediately dividing into its branches. As we come out laterally and look downward, we can see the openings for the greater palatine and lesser palatine canals for the correspondingly named nerves and blood vessels. These pieces of wire give us a simplified view of the main branches of the maxillary nerve as they emerge together from the foramen rotundum. The yellow wire represents the nasopalatine nerve passing medially through the sphenopalatine foramen. The white wire indicates the infraorbital nerve. We'll see where it goes in a minute. The two red wires represent the posterior superior alveolar nerves, which enter these small holes in the maxilla. The gold and green wires show the greater and lesser palatine nerves, passing downward to enter their respective canals. Let's see where these nerves come out, starting with the nasopalatine nerve, which we saw passing through the sphenopalatine foramen here. We can see the same exact point again if we go right round to the front and look up into the nasal cavity. Here's the sphenopalatine foramen. In reality, the nerve, represented by the wire, branches here to supply both the septum and the side wall of the nasal cavity. The infraorbital nerve passes forwards across the inferior orbital fissure and enters a bony tunnel in the floor of the orbit, the infraorbital canal. It emerges here below the orbital margin to innervate the front of the cheek. The posterior superior alveolar nerves pass forward in the maxilla, branching to supply the upper teeth and linking with the middle and anterior superior alveolar nerves which are branches of the infraorbital. The greater and lesser palatine nerves pass straight downwards in their bony canals. To see where they come out, we'll go round to a view from underneath. Here they are, emerging from the greater and lesser palatine foramina. The last part of the maxillary artery passes into the pterygopalatine fossa, dividing into its final branches. These include the descending palatine, the infraorbital, and the sphenopalatine, which passes through the sphenopalatine foramen along with the nasopalatine nerve. 